Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the investigation on former President Trump as officials prepare for a possible arrest in the hush money payment case. Also, the latest on the banking crisis. Concern for one mid-sized bank this morning amid signs that things are stabilizing. Rebecca Jarvis and Becky Worley answering your questions. We're going to have those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Several U.S. cities now making safety plans following former President Trump's calls for his supporters to protest his arrest, which he says could come as soon as today, though his spokesman says he has not received any guidance on that just yet. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington with the latest. And let's look out there with live cam, kind of drizzly, kind of wet and very foggy out there. Starting at 57 degrees, we're going to check in with Mike to see if we will see any sun at all. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. Rise and shine. It's spring, right? Yes. Right, everybody? Not yes. Some, okay. Uh, it is Tuesday, <laughs> March 21st. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. It doesn't feel like it just yet, but I think we've just wait around a little bit more. It'll happen. Damp, cool out there. Lots of fog and drizzle in some spots. Yeah, and at least temperatures starting off this morning are what we'd expect this time of year. Mid, actually a little bit above normal, and then we'll finally get slightly warmer later on this afternoon because it's been chilly the past couple of days. It really yes, it has. has. We do have a couple of spring showers out there. Not really anything of any consequence. It's just more of the uh, the news and stuff around. And once again, this is our camera down there at Brook City Base looking up and somewhere in here should be the uh, skyline. But we've got some low clouds and a lot of fog around two miles visibility out there at the airport. Bernie stage has dropped down now to just three quarters of a mile and a half mile at New Braunfels. No advisories are posted because a lot of these uh, visibilities are just above what is usually the threshold to uh, have a fog advisor, but obviously be careful when you're out there. Mile and a quarter there at Eagle Pass, mile and three quarters Carrizo Springs. And then on top of that, of course, we do have, yes, a couple of these light little spring showers. And then what you can't see on radar is all the mist and drizzle, which is too light to be picked up. But uh, some of this is, or all of this, I should say, is moving up to the north. It's all the moisture being pumped on in here. And again, it's just a couple little scattered ones that, again, are detectable on radar. Uh, a few of them there that moved through the south side, a couple around Poteet right now, and then a few that have moved on through the airport and sliding up right there along 1604. It's going to be like this all morning long. It's going to be like this even in the afternoon. A few of these light level showers. Temperatures, well, we've gone up another degree at 58. Mid 50s, pretty much on average all around the area. Obviously, a ton of humidity out there. Oak is moderate. Mold is low. Same thing with Hackberry. And throughout the rest of the morning, not much is going to be changing. We'll fluctuate a couple of degrees here and there. Some of these light showers, mist, drizzle, the fog, and that's going to be the case throughout most all of the morning. It's going to be tough to get rid of a lot of this fog, and then we'll still have low clouds and some mist and drizzle around going in through the rest of the day. 65 degrees today at noon, 70 for a high temperature. Yes, a peak or two of sunshine. Not much out there. Still one or two of those light little showers, little sprinkly showers. Going to do the same thing again tomorrow, except it will get warmer, warmer on Thursday. We've got another front moving on through here, then Thursday night. Maybe some strong storms. Then what's that have in store for us for the weekend? And behind that front, details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen. Problems out there? At all? Uh, we're starting to see a few more, Mike. Okay. Uh, thankfully, they are minor problems, but stuff that drivers want to be aware of before they get the morning roll in here because you can see the conditions out there aren't picture perfect, but we obviously aren't seeing a lot of traffic. It's still pretty early, but we're going to tend to see the we uh, tend to see the commute pick up a little bit more in this hour. So US 90 and Medio Creek, you can see that obviously fog, wet roads are what drivers can expect out there, but throw in a few stalls that could make the commute a little bit tricky. So watch out here, especially 35 South Bend at Loop 410. You see a little bit of a buildup taking place. That's at that interchange, so you have to watch out because it does look like this stalled vehicle is causing some delays for drivers. So we'll work to get some information from our friends over at Transguide, but not the only issue, unfortunately, that we are tracking. It does look like we have another stall here at 90 eastbound near Nogalitos just before I-10. So again, not causing problems for drivers in this area, but we will keep a very close eye on that. And as a friendly reminder, check your vehicles before you get out on the roadway this morning. And anytime you see those hazard lights or flashing lights, you 
you know what to do. Move over or slow down. Let's get a look here at these travel times. If you are heading into the Alamo City this early from Seguin, it's still in the green, thankfully. 29 minutes along I-10 westbound, about 33 minutes along 87 northbound. If you're heading in from Lavernia and for our friends down in Floresville, it should be about 29 minutes. So take your time. Uh, again, yeah, fog and wet roads is what we really are catching here on Transguide. Uh, uh, take your time this morning. Thankfully, no major issues are being reported. But again, watch out for some of those stalled vehicles out there this morning. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police need your eyes after two attempted abductions of young women on the city's southeast side. This happened in broad daylight over the weekend. Our Sarah Costa joins us live from the downtown area with a description of the vehicle and how those women got away. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Stephanie, and thankfully both those women were able to get away and they are safe. Police say that they fought and they screamed and yelled for help and they were able to get away and they're safe and they weren't taken by this abductor. But take a look at your screen. San Antonio police need the community's help identifying this suspect and vehicle in connection to two separate attempted kidnappings. A man 18 to 25 years old, five foot nine and around 175 pounds with brown eyes and brown hair. Police say driving a 2009-2010 maroon colored Nissan Murano. Now police say the suspect matches the description in both of these attacks. Now that first attack happened on Friday around noon on the city's southeast side on Wales and Killarney. The woman in her 20s fought for her life and got away. Now the second incident happened not far from that area outside Highlands High School. This time it was a 12 year old girl walking with a group of females. She was able to fight off the attacker. This happened in broad daylight on Saturday. Now a resident near the first attack says she saw that attack happen of that 20 year old female. She suddenly saw the suspect in this maroon Nissan attempt to put the 20 year old woman walking alone in the SUV. And she starts kicking. I could see her feet and her fist punching. Mm. And it was just too much for him. He couldn't take it. Wow. And I kept hollering at him to leave her alone, that I called the cops. Now, police are urging women to always be vigilant in their surroundings, avoid headphones and distractions, and walk in groups. Police say if anyone approaches you and attempts to hurt or kidnap you, to scream and to be ready to fight. Now, police say if you have any information on this suspect, on that vehicle that he is driving to, please call them. This is their special cases number, that number 210-207-2313. Reporting live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. New details in a shooting we first told you about as late breaking news on the night beat. This was the scene last night, a little after 10 on Commerce Street on the east side of town. Police tell us it started as an argument between neighbors over a parking space. Officers say one neighbor pulled out a knife, the other had a gun. At one point, shots were fired. One person was hit twice in the leg. The shooter was arrested. And we just checked with the Bear County Medical Examiner, and we still do not know the names of a man, his wife, and their daughter, who are all found dead inside their northeast side apartment. Now, officers tell us that the man shot and killed them before turning the gun on himself. The discovery was made yesterday a little before noon at the Winding Creek Apartments on Northwest Military Highway near Wurzbach Parkway. Investigators are trying to figure out if there was a history of domestic violence. Now to the courtroom in a case of a man convicted of firing shots at a wall that killed an innocent woman in a nearby apartment. After taking a plea deal yesterday, he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Amir Muhammad Powell was sentenced on capital murder for the death of 30-year-old Shawana Robinson. That shooting happened back in 2019. Police say Powell became upset at a woman in his apartment. He started shooting at the wall. At least one bullet went through the wall and into Robinson's apartment. She was hit in the stomach and died at a hospital. Her family left the courtroom yesterday unhappy with the outcome. I feel like we did not get any justice for what this man did to my sister. Um, 20 years is not enough. He took my sister's life. His life should be taken as well. My mom was an amazing, beautiful, she was intelligent. She was a caring, loving, strong woman. The family says Robinson was working towards getting her real estate license at the time of her death. 
Another big story we're following this morning. Cities across the U.S. now bracing for unrest. Over the weekend, former President Donald Trump claimed without evidence that he could be arrested as soon as today and called on supporters to protest. Trump is at the center of a Manhattan grand jury criminal investigation into hush money that payments into an adult film star. An indictment would make Trump the first former president to face criminal charges. ABC's Justin Finch has the story. Police in New York City setting up barricades and preparing for former President Donald Trump's possible indictment. Trump saying over the weekend, without evidence, that he would be arrested today and urging supporters to, quote, protest and take our nation back. So far, Trump's spokesman has said he has not been notified about an imminent arrest and no comment yet from Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg. But Bragg telling his staff, we do not tolerate attempts to intimidate our office or threaten the rule of law in New York. Did you know about the $130,000 payment to Tommy Daniels? Trump initially denied knowing about the hush money that a Manhattan grand jury is now investigating, but later said he did. That $130,000 paid to adult film actress Stormy Daniels during the 2016 campaign to cover up their relationship. Prosecutors now investigating if Trump falsified documents and violated election laws. It's a typical Donald J. Trump play out of the playbook. Figure out how you're going to muddy the water as best as you possibly can. Denigrate Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, on MSNBC. Cohen has admitted to helping to arrange that Daniels payment at Trump's direction and pleaded guilty to campaign finance violations. Michael Cohen, he's totally unreliable. Well, he went to jail and now he's on the revenge tour. Trump ally Robert Costello testifying before the grand jury that Trump committed no crime. And still no word on if a Trump indictment is coming, but ABC News has learned that the Secret Service and the NYPD held a call Monday to review possible logistics and security just in case. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Right now, 6 11, 58 degrees. Silicon, we have a lot heading your way, including a look at some of the stories trending right now on our website at kset.com. Plus, we have a quick update on a little girl hurt during that tree collapse at the San Antonio Zoo and what the city is doing to make sure everyone stays safe at parks around town. And not really feeling like spring just yet. Looking out there with live cam, we're at 58 degrees. At least it's not as cold as it was yesterday, but drivers are still, in, still have to deal with the fog this morning. We'll be right back. And welcome back at 615. We have some good news following that scary tree collapse at the San Antonio Zoo last week. The little girl who was hurt in that accident is improving. Now she is currently listed in fair condition in the hospital. Seven people were hurt when a massive branch broke off one of the zoo's trees. Following that incident at the zoo, the city of San Antonio is now inspecting trees in Brackenridge Park. The city's forester tells us they are not responsible for the zoo's tree assessments or maintenance, but they say they are already taking steps to ensure these trees on this side are taken care of. Here's what he had to say. Currently our pruning trees up over here by uh, by the river uh, and we also are removing a few dead trees. I don't have the number right uh, off the top of my head, but we're looking somewhere in the ballpark of five or six trees that that are completely dead and have been identified as a hazard. A city's forester says when they're looking for an unhealthy tree, they're looking for discoloration in the canopy. That's the highest part of the tree. Also leaves falling at a time of year when they shouldn't. Also heaving in the roots. Teams have been in the parks every day to make sure anything unsafe is reported. Trading now on KSAT.com tips for a better night's sleep. Consumer Reports has some things that can help. First, make sure you get a supportive mattress and pillow. Do not underrate the importance of a good pillow. Also, remember your environment uh, plays a big part of sleep quality. Some people need absolute silence. Others prefer a little steady back no noise to fall asleep. Finally, may want to invest in a mattress topper. We have all these suggestions on our website at KSAT.com. Also online from the archives, a look back at the best of our town name series. Now, Case It Explains brings you the highlights from the more than 30 South Texas towns and sites we have visited over the last decade. So you could just check it out right now on our homepage. And check this out. It's like high school, but featherier. A new study found flamingos form clicks like people do. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Experts say flamingo personality cues help determine how they find their friendship groups. 
Their inner circle can include its breeding partner and friends, and they can form bonds that can last for decades. You can read more about all these stories on ksat.com. <coughs> so are there mean flamingos like mean girls? Yes. Mean yes. flamingos. Apparently, yes. <laughs> yes. There, yes. There apparently are. And they yeah. were, were peak in certain days, I think. Right. All ah. Every day. Yeah. Oh. And they talk about the other flamingos? Yes. <laughs> You're overthinking this a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's a little uh, scary. But it's adorable. Let's check out traffic, yeah. Stephen. Yeah, you know, I always see that lone flamingo out there, Aww. so it Outcast. does make sense now. Yes. Uh, hey, let's get a quick look here at 35 North at Loop 410. That interchange I told you about where we have that stalled vehicle. Looks like we have uh, Texas Hero trucks that are out there working to help the uh, driver out, but this may involve two vehicles. You can see it there off in the shoulder lane. Uh, in fact, uh, taking a closer look, it also does appear that San Antonio police are on the scene. And remember, this has been reported as a stall by tax dot. So if something changes, they tend to update that information on their website. We are tracking it closely, but right now again, that's being reported as a stall vehicle and you can see it's uh, getting a little bit busier out there where it's being reported is right at that interchange. Again, 35 Southbound. If you're making your way into the Alamo City, perhaps from Live Oak or anywhere outside 1604 in the northeast side, you will stand, uh, see those flashing lights. So just make sure to give them plenty of room. Also still have a stall vehicle here. US 90 eastbound at no Galitos, but other than that, it's uh, been pretty quiet. Obviously, we have some of the fog and the wet roads out there to deal with, so just give yourself plenty of time and watch out as we have plenty of road work that is taking place this month. Also uh, happening later in the month is painting work outside uh, I-10 in Kendall County. That does start next Wednesday and should wrap pretty quickly, so just plan ahead because it does begin at 9 in the morning and should wrap at 3 in the afternoon. Single lane closures in both directions from Scenic Loop Road to State Highway 46 is what drivers can expect. But if you are traveling down here along 35, you can't expect to see these flashing lights out there for a little bit longer. Watch out for those crews. I see some of them actually on the highway right now, so give them plenty of room to get the job done. Stephen is always urging folks to maintain their cars. Turn your lights on, do a walk around. I've noticed several cars mm -hmm. lately, headlights are working, taillights yeah. are not working oh, yeah. at all, not functioning. And yeah. uh, they'll catch that at your state inspection, but in the meantime, it's a right. danger to everybody else. Yeah. So Especially do a walk around if you can. Especially with the fog and, Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and the weather like this. Mm -hmm. exactly. And if you've got a lot of times like maybe automatic lights that, that come on mm -hmm. when it's dark out, if you know maybe somebody has been in your car or whatever, yes. turn that They've off. Turned yes. them off. Right, so like when you get maintenance done on your car. Yeah. It happens yeah. all the time. Yeah. Uh huh. All right, speaking of which, watch out for these school buses this morning because we got all that fog, all that mist out there, and it's going to be just kind of slow going. So, you know, kids may have a hood up or something, so they're not mm, keeping an eye out. 55 degrees or mid 50s, steady temperatures, best way to put it. Mist, fog, couple of showers, and then after school, 70 degrees. Still keep a rain jacket handy because we're still going to have a couple of light showery sprinkles out there. A peak or two of sunshine. At least it will be warmer than it has been the past few days. Still not quite up to par, but not bad at all. So once again, here's what it looks like out there where we should see a skyline and we're not. You can almost make out a couple of buildings right there, but yeah, a lot of low clouds, a lot of fog. And here's again, this is not much at all in the wider view. You can hardly see anything as far as any of this rain. This is the detectable rain. We got a lot of mist and that drizzle, which is too light to be picked up on radar. And this is all continuing to work its way up to the north. So one little batch moved up in through uh, northern Bear County. And here's the next little batch of kind of line of these light showers moving through Elmendorf, coming right up uh, 37 just about to hit into uh, 410 there on the south side. And then if you're going down 35, you're going to run into more of these uh, showers. Again, elsewhere, this is pretty much about it. And it's all because you can see down here actually along the coastal plain where more of these sprinkles are coming in because this is all the moisture being pumped on in here from the Gulf of Mexico. That's obviously feeding or helping out with the fog as well. Half mile visibility at New Braunfels. Uh, same thing at Bernie Stage, but Elsewhere, it's like two, three miles. So it's not really down to the levels where we would need any sort of a dense fog advisory. Now we're at three quarters of a mile over there at Eagle Pass. Not bad along the coastal plain this morning. Temperatures have been holding steady, maybe going up a couple of degrees in the past few hours, mid 50s, mid to upper 50s. And again, a ton of humidity. We won't move at all this morning. We're going to keep some of these light sprinkly showers around here pretty much all day long. The chance for it It won't be constant, but there's still just going to be a little bit of that out there. You know, even yesterday afternoon, there were just a couple little drops here and there. Some sunshine, I think very limited, though we will make it up to 70. And then once we hit that 70 temperatures are going to be almost steady overnight. We'll drop 
perhaps to the mid 60s by tomorrow morning. Here's computer model and again it keeps those light little sprinkles around pretty much all morning long here and there throughout the uh, the rest of the, the day and going into the evening hours. And once we get into the latter portion of the week, first of all, the humidity is very high. Then we see the dew points drop off substantially as we get this next front to move on through here. Now this front is going to be similar to the one last week as far as there is the chance for some severe storms along with this as strong, uh, potentially severe high winds, hail would be the biggest threats. And this is going to be late Thursday night, early Friday morning difference being we're not going to get the cold air coming in in behind it like the front last week. We will get drier air though, so it'll be more comfortable. 65 degrees today at noon. Couple of sprinkles, a little light shower here and there. 70 for a high temperature today. It's limited sunshine, couple little sprinkles, you know, just that nuisance kind of stuff as you're uh, running errands this afternoon and or heading out to pick up the kids. Same thing tomorrow, same thing Thursday, although we will be warmer than that front moves through and that's going to give us a beautiful looking weekend and then more humidity late Sunday. We'll be back. Struggling with the highs and lows of bipolar one? Ask about Braylar because you are greater than your bipolar one and you can help take control of your symptoms with Braylar. Some medicines only treat the lows or highs. Braylar treats depressive, acute manic, and mixed episodes of bipolar one in adults. Proven full spectrum relief for all bipolar one symptoms. And in Braylar clinical studies, most saw no substantial impact on weight. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke. Call your doctor about unusual changes in behavior or suicidal thoughts. Antidepressants can increase these in children and young adults. Report fever, stiff muscles, or confusion, which may mean a life-threatening reaction or uncontrollable muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma, death, weight gain, and high cholesterol may occur. Movement dysfunction and restlessness are common side effects. Sleepiness and stomach issues are also common. Side effects may not appear for several weeks. Ask about Raylar and learn how AbbVie could help you save. In today's Tech Bytes, Google's early access to Bard. That's the company's conversational AI chatbot. Google is inviting some of its Pixel super fans to try it out and possibly offer feedback as a way of training Bard in real life use. No word yet on when it will fully debut. New games are coming to Netflix. The streaming service is looking to add 40 more games to its platforms this year. It's also working with partners to produce others. Now the plan is to release new games every month this year. And PC maker Acer is branching out to make e-bikes. The company says its first offering its designs for cities. It reportedly has AI features that learn riders' personal preferences and even change gears based on road conditions. The range is about 70 miles. No word yet on the price tag. I was going to tell a bicycle joke, but someone told me my puns are wheelie bad. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. voicing their opinions on the consolidation proposal of five elementary schools within Harlandale ISD. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up on GMSA, how you can still voice your opinion. I will never get Sebastian back and 25 years that this individual will serve in the adult prison will never be enough for me. A local mother's fight for justice after the death of her son will preview a new Texas crime story. Let's look out there with live cam. You're still going to need a jacket, possibly a rain jacket. It's been kind of misty this morning and very foggy. Welcome back, everybody. 630 on your Tuesday. It's March 21st. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had a good morning so far. And, you know, we're just kind of waiting for that sun. So let's check in with Mike. I don't <laughs> don't get too anxious about sunshine today. There'll be a little bit and squeezing on through here and there, but we're still going to keep a lot of these little sprinkles around here. Maybe a light little shower this afternoon. Plenty of clouds hanging around here. It will get warmer than yesterday, and I know we didn't see any sunshine at all. At least not in my backyard. It stayed cloudy and very chilly. We'll get warmer, but yeah, don't get too anxious for for sun out there. A lot of clouds. The road is definitely wet over there by the airport. Temperature stands at 58. Dew point 50. Seven. These numbers have been going up a little bit in the past couple of hours, so we've got relative humidities well up in the upper 90s. Wind is out of the south primarily, right around 5 to uh, 10 miles per hour. Visibility at the airport is okay. 
Bernie Stage and New Braunfels both at just a half mile. That's some of the thicker fog around the area and then Eagle Pass at three quarters of a mile. So nothing that's just down to pea soup, zero visibility, but enough out there to uh, make it so you have to, again, take your time this morning, plus all the uh, light little showers that are out there. There's not much. I mean, this is what's detectable on radar right now. There's mist and drizzle, which is too light to be picked up on radar, but this will continue on, as I said, throughout the rest of the morning as well as going into the afternoon. So just a few of these sprinkles here right around Floresville and then northern Atascosa County coming up into Bear County. We've got a few of them there around 410 on the uh, the south side. And we've had these sort of little waves that continue and sort of move on up to the north. And we had a couple of them that moved on out of here. And now that little bit is going to continue to work its way up through downtown. So just assume all of the streets are wet out there because it's been like this off and on all morning long and pretty much all night long. Mid 50s all around the area. Oak is moderate, low amounts of mold and hackberry right now. And uh, the rest of today, again, mostly cloudy skies, limited sunshine, sprinkles, a light little shower. It will be warmer. We make it up to 70 here in town. And then tomorrow and as well as Thursday, pretty much the same thing. Morning mist, Fog. We get even warmer. We'll be up in the 80 degree range tomorrow, low 80s on Thursday, but then that front moves through late. That's going to touch off some showers and thunderstorms. Some of those storms potentially strong to severe late Thursday night, early on Friday. Then after that rain Friday, we're going to clear out nicely. Gorgeous Friday afternoon, Saturday. Not bad on Sunday either. Temperatures will stay in the 80s. Pleasant mornings, nice afternoons. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? Uh, starting to see some issues pop up on the roadways, Mike. Few more stalls and, of course, a lot more folks getting out there, getting the morning started with us. But 35 North of Loop 410, we're going to start here. Now, this is still being reported as a stall from TxDOT, and you can see first responders have been out there for a little while. Those TxDOT Hero trucks working to assist those drivers. So, again, uh, it's been lingering around a little bit too long now, so we want to make sure we move over, slow down anytime you see those flashing lights or hazard lights. But that's where we also see a little bit of a buildup taking place out there as you approach that interchange. So not a good area where to have an issue as we tend to see a lot more folks make their way uh, into town from 35 southbound. So be on the lookout there. I do want to take you over here to Loop 410 westbound at State Highway 151. Another stall has been reported and it does seem to be this is the trending issue at this hour. Now keep in mind we are seeing a lot more people out on the roadway because it's returned to class and obviously returned to work for a lot of folks out there. So we're going to see tend to see a lot more red take over our map, but we have also seen plenty of fog and wet roads out there. So just give yourself plenty of time. Make sure to use those low beams and make sure to watch out for these flashing lights there at 35 North at Loop 410. Remember, this is in the southbound lanes at that interchange and traffic is picking up out there. So be sure to give those first responders plenty of room guys. Stephen, thank you. After years of financial hardship and declining student enrollment, Harlandale Independent School District here in San Antonio has a plan to consolidate uh, several schools. Sarah Costa is live from downtown with a recap of Monday's school board meeting and what community members had to say about this proposal. Sarah? Good morning, Mark. Yeah, Harlandale ISD board members, they met last night and they had a chance to hear from the community about how they felt about the consolidation of those five schools. Just take a listen. I implore you and ask you to not repurpose Moral Elementary. We put our students first every day and serve our current purpose just fine. We do not need to be repurposed. I would rather much have students and staff transfer to other campuses than to have employees be let go or for every and for every child to have a teacher in the classroom. So if approved, the plan would consolidate the Jewel Wetzel Center and four other elementary schools, Columbia Heights, Morrell, Rayburn and Vestal. So the district says they are all operating at at least 50 percent capacity right now. Rayburn is closer to 60 percent capacity. If the proposal is approved, district officials say they will help facilitate the transition of all effect affected staff and students to other schools within the district. The district says that there has been a 19 percent decrease in resident elementary students over the course of four years from 2018 to 2021 and that a significant loss is expected through 2026. 
The district also says low birth rates, declining market share, and a lack of residential development are also seen as reasons for that decrease in student population. So parents, staff, and members of the community, they have one more chance to voice their opinions about this consolidation proposal. There is a community town hall happening tonight at 5.30 at Harlandale High School until 7 p.m. It's happening in the high school's auditorium. Now, the school board will vote on this proposal on March 27th. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. I knew this morning a woman rushed to the hospital overnight after being struck during a hit and run crash on the west side of town. This happened last night just before 11 on Evers Road, and that's not far from Loop 410 and Bandera Road. Police say the woman, woman was walking when she was hit by the vehicle. The driver took off and the woman was taken to the hospital. The new Uvalde School District Police Chief has been formally named. Joshua Gutierrez now officially in the position after being the interim chief. School board approved Gutierrez as the interim unanimously in November of last year. Here at KSAT, we did an exclusive interview with him in December. The previous police chief was Pete Adedondo, who has been under major scrutiny for the law enforcement handling of the mass shooting at Robb Elementary last year. Adedondo was fired back in August. And two and a half years ago, a 17-year-old teen from San Antonio went on a bike ride and never made it back home. Now the mother of Sebastian Eduardo Carpio is fighting for justice. It's the topic of the newest Texas crime story, and here's a sneak peek. My son did not deserve that they did whatever they did to him. You messed with the wrong kid. And now Ana Maria Carpio is making sure all those involved get punished to the full extent of the law. This is Texas Crime Stories, A Mother's Fight for Justice. I ask this, that my Sebastian's case serve as a good purpose for those families that are victims of aggravated robberies of murders to not give up and to fight for justice to fight for what is right the new texas crime story is out today you can find it on our website at kset.com kset's youtube channel spotify apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts in mexico a march and vigil was held for an army private found dead at fort hood here in texas u.s military investigators say there was no foul play when the when 20-year-old Ana Basadua Ruiz died last week. Her mother says Army officials told her her daughter died by suicide, a claim she's questioning. The League of United Latin American Citizens, or LULAC, is demanding a Justice Department investigation into the death. The military says harassment allegations will be investigated. The West Coast is getting hit with another batch of severe weather from California to parts of Arizona and Nevada. Millions of people are dealing with heavy rain, flooding threats, and gusty winds. CNN's John Lawrence reports. Santa Rosa County, California, where one resident is hoping crews can fortify a rain-soaked hill with gravel in an attempt to prevent a potential landslide. There's another storm coming in. I'm expecting a little bit more of the dirt to shift. I feel hopeful, you know, that they're working on fixing the issue and, you know, hopefully it's, uh, it's only positive movement from here. Forecasters say California is getting hit with another atmospheric river, which can be described as a fire hose that blasts saturated air from the tropics into elevated latitudes and spraying increased amounts of rain or snow. We're not hoping for it, but Mother Nature, she's got her own mind. California has already experienced at least 11 of these atmospheric rivers this season, and this one is expected to last through Wednesday. Thousands of Californians were advised to flee their homes. We had conversations with the residents here a few days ago. They all evacuated voluntarily and uh, to the evacuation point at Portable College. More than 25 million people in California, Nevada and Arizona are under alerts for strong winds. The National Weather Service says the San Bernardino Mountains could see up to four feet of snow by Wednesday. I'm John Lawrence reporting. I'm now 641 and 58 degrees for now. Important news if you're in a new relationship after the break. Some red flags you need to be looking out for. And we want to wish a happy birthday to Samuel Hernandez, turning 95 years old. Happy birthday. That means he's been watching Case out a long that time. That is right. Congratulations <laughs> and happy birthday, Mr. Hernandez. Yeah, have a good day. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. 645 Money. It can't buy you love, but it can tell you a lot about the person you're dating. Here's ABC's Rena Roy with Money Red Flags to Spot in a Partner. You think you might have found the one, but before things get too serious, you should take a look at your date's money habits. Money habits can actually influence and be indicators, not only with respect to finances, but also with respect to what your partner prioritizes how he or she spends their time. Emily Irwin of Wells Fargo says how your partner deals with money can affect you too, especially if you're thinking about taking the next step, like signing a lease together or getting married. You wanna be sure as you enter into a relationship that you're not taking on additional risk or liability that you didn't intend to or that you were unaware of. Irwin says to keep an eye out for these four money red flags. Financial secrecy. If your partner is unable or unwilling to discuss their finances with you, such as income, expenses, spending habits, or debt, it could be a red flag. Inevitably, conversations are going to arise about financial decisions, and you want to be sure that you have a full picture of the other's balance sheet. Another red flag, flaunting wealth. This can include always being the one to pick up the bill in a showy way or always buying the most expensive gifts for themselves or others. It can demonstrate a higher risk tolerance that you may or may not be comfortable with or even cause pressure on you to reciprocate those types of large expenditures. Be cautious of job instability or lack of career goals. What's important is what does that person prioritize in his or her life and how is he or she going to support that in the future? And look out for unattractive frugality, which includes behaviors you might find unappealing, like unwillingness to tip or contribute to charities. And so you really need to take a step back and say to yourself, is this person's behaviors, these little micro behaviors, indicators of something larger that in the long term, might be something that you find you just are polar opposites. While talking about money can be a sensitive topic for couples, Irwin says it is important to start the conversation in small incremental ways. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. All right, time check is 647. Let's get a look here at 10 at Frio. I was just speaking to our friends at Transguide over the phone, and we were trying to get some information confirmed here because notice that traffic's getting a little busy out there, but there was also some flashing lights that we encountered. In fact, uh, Justin Horn, as he walked into the newsroom, did tell me that it looked like there was a possible crash that was reported. So this is the information that we have right now. And again, it does look like that has cleared out, but it's still causing a little bit of a buildup, maybe residual slowdowns. I-10 westbound at Frio Street, the lower level was actually closed. And uh, again, and it does look like first responders were able to clear out this incident rather quickly, but notice we still have a little bit of a slowdown as you approach the Y and uh, not looking good in the westbound lanes, but hopefully we'll see some of that pick up in the next few minutes or so. Let's get you up over here to the northeast side, 35 south and at loop 410. That stall vehicle has uh, still lingering or has been lingering, lingering around, pardon me, for a little while now. So first responders have obviously had their work cut out for them in these areas, but make sure to give them plenty of room. Slowdowns are starting to take over the map. You can see a lot of that red taking over the screen, especially along US 90 eastbound as you head towards 1604. That's always expected around this time because it is morning rush. So obviously folks are getting the day started early with us, but let's get one last look there at 10 at Frio. You can see that traffic is moving along pretty steadily through that area. But again, Justin Horn, uh, eyes on the road, did tell me that he saw flashing lights out there. Second day in the row, we've had incidents pop up along I-10. This could be yes. an ugly morning for yeah. sure. And it's, it's somewhat just comparing that picture mm -hmm. to yesterday. yesterday. It's much, Gosh, much yeah. murkier out there. Here's case in point. Uh, this is over there at 10 at 410. Now, granted, this is uh, this wow. camera's on top of that building, and there you can barely see at the bottom of your screen. That's the uh, outbound traffic on 10. This is 10 westbound right here. Somewhere in there is 410. So, and again, this is a couple of hundred feet up on top of the building, but we do obviously have some low visibility out there. We've got, well, it's even hard to see some of these sprinkly showers. A few of them that are still continuing. It's, it's this moisture comes in and almost sort of runs into the escarpment, if you will, and that's why we tend to see a lot of these sprinkly showers right in and around town. And as you can see, there's another decent batch of the detectable rain that's coming into the southeast side of Bear County, coming just about right up 37 and then sliding up to the north. So over there right along 410 and 35 
you're going to be just in these light little showers. But then on top of this, what we don't see on radar is all the light mist and drizzle. So we do have some fog out there. Bernie at one mile, half mile at New Braunfels. Two miles at the airport, so not bad. It's dropped a little bit there at Port S.A. And then elsewhere, Eagle Pass is just a half mile visibility. Nothing uh, too bad there along the, the coastal plain, which usually we see a lot of the fog there along the coast. So it's pretty much west of the coastal plain today. Temperatures really aren't going to move at all this morning. We'll still keep a lot of these light little sprinkly showers out. We'll kind of struggle our way up into the mid 60s today at noon, then top off at 70. Couple of peaks of sunshine. I'm not really too too big on the sunshine today, but there may be a few uh, little thin spots in the clouds here and there. We will make it up to 70 later on, and still a couple of these light little sprinkly showers going on throughout the rest of the morning and even throughout the afternoon. Not constantly, but keep a rain jacket handy just because you know here and there a few little sprinkles. We're going to do this all over again tomorrow morning as well as on Thursday morning, and we keep all the humidity around here in through Thursday. Then that front moves on through and look what that does knocks the humidity way down here. Now this is a similar situation at least with this graphic to last week difference being temperatures won't be dropping down. So even in behind that front we will still be in the 80s Friday, Saturday and going in through the rest of the weekend. But it's the low temperatures because we are going to get some drier air coming on in here that will temporarily drop down. So we'll be below normal down to 50 on Saturday and then creeping back up as the humidity tries to come back into the picture a little bit going into the first part of next week. So the forecast today again what you see is what you get pretty much all morning long all the way pretty much through noon. We'll still have sprinkles around here, a lot of low clouds and some leftover fog, 65 degrees and then 70. A couple of peaks of sunshine here and there. Still a few little light sprinkly showers out there. We do it again tomorrow, although warmer and warmer yet on Thursday. And then with all that humidity, that is going to then uh, set the stage for some potentially strong storms as the front moves on through here. But it looks pretty good in behind that. Mark. Thank you, Mike. And outside with the live cam as we go to break and we get ready to wrap up Good Morning San Antonio view at San Antonio International Airport. Don't forget, you're headed out the door this morning. Every now and then it's a great idea to turn on your vehicle's light to do a walk around. Make sure all your headlights and taillights are working. Time check 655. All right, let's get one last look at these roadways. You can see things are moving along just fine from these shots at Transguide, but unfortunately new issues have popped up here. So be on the lookout here at US 90 eastbound near Nogalitos. A crash has occurred and it's causing a little bit of a buildup there. And in fact, US 90 is a pretty busy spot. Also, watch out for some slowdowns here along I-10 westbound at Frio Street. An incident has cleared, but the lower level was closed for a little while. So we have some residual backup there, Mike. And it is just messy out there. Once again, this is 10 at 410. Now, granted, the camera's up there on top of the building, but we do have uh, reduced visibility around here. And then we've got all of these light little sprinkly showers. This is going to continue on throughout the rest of the morning. Temperatures actually warmed a little bit. We'll make it up to 70 later on today, but we'll still have a couple of these uh, sprinkly showers kind of hanging around here. So. Yeah. Round of applause for our executive producer Joy for doing yeah. five hours of news by herself yeah. in the last yeah. day or so. Yeah, Thanks, we knew Joy. you could do it, but She's, we appreciate you. She sounds thrilled. <laughs> Have a good